So I'm going to just bring out the elephant in the room. I think this is the prediction we both have on here for the for the House and the Senate in 2022. I assume you made a prediction. Here's mine. You're not going to like it. I think we're on the different side of the coin here. But I'm going to give you some caveats. I think we lose majority in the House. But I still think we maintain a 50-50 tie in the Senate. And that is not the worst case scenario for us because we can still control half of it. And obviously Chuck Schumer will still be a uh, majority leader. So um, I don't know. Do you want to go off that or do you want me to explain why or kind of my feelings? What do you think? Yeah, well, no, well, I'll, I'll respond. Right. So, yes, that was on my list. And it was. I think the thing is our numbering is not necessarily relevant because these are just five predictions. But I had that as my number two, you know, the the right behind number one. But we're on the same page but with nuance. I am not going to say we're going to hold or lose or win, I will tell you this. I do expect Democrats to outperform what what people expect them to do. Now, quite frankly, outperforming could mean where we would still lose the House and hold on to the Senate, because I think a lot of people expect them to lose both. Yeah. Additionally, um, outperforming could also mean you lose the House, but by not not nearly the, the, the ass-whooping that people think they'll get. And or, you know, outperforming could be inside. I, I know that's a little vague. It's not quantifiable. But I do think, you know how even though the Democrats took back the House and the Senate uh, this last time around, I think especially in the House, there was an expectation that we would do it by a much larger margin. Mm. And so we underperformed. So uh, while I, I don't feel comfortable because we first of all still don't know what all the maps say, um, I don't feel comfortable saying we'll we win or lose. I will say that we will overperform or outperform what the expectations are. And that could be losing by a little bit or holding on to one, or it could mean holding on to both, but I just think we'll outperform. Yeah, no, I, I think I agree with you there. My prediction for the House is that we lose the majority, but barely, right? It might be by three or four, where you might be able to pick off a Liz Cheney or somebody who they might not have total control of the House. But I do think that we will keep at least the tie in the Senate. I don't think necessarily we'll get to 51, but I do think that any seats that we lose, I think they're worried about, if I'm not mistaken, Mark Kelly's seat in Arizona, and they're they're a little bit worried about Warnock's seat in Georgia. But I think that the Republicans obviously had a, a retirement in Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken, that Democrats are favored to win. And there's another seat that we could pick up that's uh, currently red. So I think we definitely hold on to the tie. I, I do think there's nuance here. There's a lot of different factors. For instance, the biggest factor is Warnock is hel- gets help from Stacey Abrams. If they're going to be on the same ballot and Abrams is going to get people to the polls, what, that's going to help Warnock, right? And also, I don't think he will officially announce but all indications are that Trump is definitely running, right? So I also believe that that helps us. Uh, John, I don't want to say this because it's I know you think it's voter suppression. I, I am starting to take that mentality. If we lose the House, I will look at it as a silver lining for one reason, is Trump will be on the ballot in 2024. And I don't think if they, if they do take back the House, Trump being on the ballot is best case for us because it'll get people to turn out and in turn, in theory, we could take it back at least to 2024. So the silver lining there is I don't think they will have the house for more than two years, ideally. Oh.